In Britain today, we consume more fast food than ever before. It's cheap, not only that, it keeps me going every day. But how much do we really know about the lives of the people who make our food? I don't know how they produce it, where they produce it. I don't care. I'm going to have as much as possible. From top-class restaurants to low-cost supermarkets, we're demanding and consuming more and more food from all over the world. We have a takeaway about four times a week. But would we feel the same if we knew the human price of producing our food? We need food that's cheap, we want food that's cheap and we expect it. But obviously it's going to come at some cost. Over the next four weeks, six young and hungry British consumers will travel to Asia to live and work alongside the millions of people who grow, catch and process the food that we eat. They are fast food junkie Manos. If that importer and exporter is exploiting another person so that my price is cheap, then so be it. Fitness fanatic Olu. This is not a meal, this is a snack. Fussy eater Jess. I'd eat meat if it was in the form of a burger or a sausage. But if you've got a whole chicken leg in front of you and you're pulling the bones off and pulling the skin off, I can't stand it. <laughs> Luxury food lover Lauren. Food is my main passion. I think about it 80% of the time. Concerned consumer Stacey. You see all the price wars going on between the big supermarkets. It does make you think, where, where are they cutting the corners? And keen amateur chef Josh. Wake up in the morning, I'm thinking about what I'm having for breakfast, what I'm having for lunch, tea time. These six young Brits will discover how workers in Asia get tuna, prawns, rice and chicken to our dinner tables from thousands of miles away. On the first leg of their journey, they'll work in Indonesia's tuna industry. In the UK, we consume a staggering one billion tins of tuna a year. You smell that. The six Brits will live with the tuna workers. But it isn't very nice. Stinks. It's grotty. Oh, my God! The pressure is on right from the start as Lauren collapses on the factory floor. Oh, keep ahead up, keep ahead up. That's really put me off. That scared me so much. People are just working like machines. I can't act like a machine. I'm just a human being. The scale of the challenge threatens to split the group right from the start. Are you scared? And they're shocked by the reality of life at sea. Just been shown to where we're sleeping and it looks crap. Sulawesi, Indonesia. In just a few hours, these six young Brits will experience a side of the food industry we never see. All right, All right, let's start. Tomorrow, they start work in one of the factories processing the tuna sold in Britain's shops and cafes. <laughs> but first, they're going to meet the tuna workers they'll be staying with. So different to anything in the UK, you'd never see this anywhere. Yeah, like our sheds that like yeah. Yeah, exactly, to our yeah. Your sheds in the garden. Yeah. If you notice, we've not seen a fat person yet. <laughs> <laughs> what, you mean the one at the back? <laughs> what is wrong with you? I'm joking, man. I'm just saying. I'm fearing for my life a bit. <laughs> oh, my God. After an hour's journey, they arrive at the tuna workers' homes. Can you smell that? <laughs> Where are we? Shanty town to the left. Oh my god! What happened? Have you, have you said Your suitcase. Olu, Jess, and Manos will be staying with line supervisor Mascarena and her family of seven. They live right next to the tuna factory. Ah, hello. Hello. How you doing? Welcome. Salamat sorry. Salamat sorry. Salamat sorry. Pleased to meet you. Mascarena works five days a week in the factory and is paid the equivalent of 40p an hour, a basic living wage. Her house only has two small bedrooms. Where are we okay. gonna sleep? Yeah. yeah. Where are we gonna sleep? Okay. okay. This the... is not. <laughs> How are we gonna sleep together? You're already you're the size of the bed. Oh, I'm really scared because I know I'm not gonna be able to get sleep. I just know it. Toilet? Toilet. Ah. Toilet. Yeah. Ah. There, yeah. <laughs> 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 I 
Oh God. Saya tersinggung karena bagi itu orang itu sudah layak. Oh. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. 20-year-old Manos Kumar is a politics student from Collindale, North London. I'm an anarchist. Equality over poverty. I'm an anarchist. Abolish hypocrisy. I'm an anarchist. I hate the monarchy. <laughs> Manos's father emigrated from Bangladesh to set up an Indian restaurant. Ginger and garlic. My relationship with my dad is in you know, par. What he's done, he's done. Fair enough, he's looked after me, he's nurtured me. For this reason, I respect him. However, now it's my turn and my ambition is to do better than my dad. Manos doesn't like Indian cuisine. Some might call me a hypocrite for saying this, but I just don't like curry. I, I certainly wouldn't eat rice. I wouldn't eat, I wouldn't eat none of that. He's less uh, connected with the uh, Indian culture. He's more the uh, Western <laughs> type. What Manos does love is cheap, fast food. My favourite food is chicken and chips. Uh, I eat it quite a lot. That's a ketchup as well, yeah? It benefits me because it's cheap. And he doesn't care how his cheap chicken is produced. But if one man is to live in luxury, then the evil necessities of economic exploitation must occur. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. It's inevitable. He's a good boy, but, uh, but uh, he had to change. And I started nearly puking, I, and I do, and I, and I made a mistake. I, I made, I done the most dreadful thing. She, she saw me nearly puke out, and I, I just feel really bad about it. Oh my god! Across town, Josh, Stacy, and Lauren are staying in a boarding house. <laughs> They'll be living with 29-year-old line supervisor Ratmi and 12 other tuna workers. The boarding house has 14 bedrooms and the Brits will be sharing all their facilities. Kitchen? Kitchen? Wow. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said Jackie Chan. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Is that the fridge? Yeah, ice in there. Ice. It's a bit different to back home, isn't it? Yeah. That's a good thing. To my eight hob cooker. <laughs> Dishwasher. <laughs> it's very wobbly. Oh, my God. <laughs> 20-year-old mortgage advisor Josh already owns his own home in Warrington. This is the back garden. Where he lives with his girlfriend and baby boy. Do you have to flush? Yeah. Flush? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK. I'm dreading going to the toilet. It stinks. And then they told me a minute ago that there was lizards around, which is seen one. And I hate lizards. That night, Josh calls his girlfriend. I'm living in... Um, I don't even know how to exp explain it. Just like a little shanty house. No, we haven't got a shower. We haven't got a flushing toilet. Um, but there's lizards everywhere. Love you too. For all the Brits, it's an early night. Tomorrow, they'll be making the food that we eat. Dawn, and everyone's up for their first day at the tuna factory. You all right? What's the time? This is a bit mega early. <laughs> My first night in bed was so horrible. That bloody dog. Ratney, how long does it take to get there? Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. I'm a bit scared about what, what we're in for. No way. I think the old whole of Indonesia works here. Feels like first day at school. Everyone's staring at us. Good to see you there. Look at Ali. At 7 a.m. every morning. 800 workers line up to start another eight-hour shift at the PT Samudra tuna plant. Is anyone else a bit anxious? <laughs> yeah, I'm anxious. Discipline is strict. 
And before our Brits are even allowed through the doors, they're subject to one of the factory's toughest rules. Your nails, ladies, is very hard. Yeah. Personal okay, hygiene. No jewelry, no long nail, no nail polish. Fingernails must be kept short to prevent bacteria contaminating the tuna. I'm going to cut myself. There's nothing more to cut. Lagi. Lagi. Oh, this is so hard to see. Nice one. Look like sausage fingers now. <laughs> The smell in here is not happening. Tell me about it. Still long. Still no? Yes. I really no. can't see, see that different. A half see a millimetre of nail. See that? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't see it. You're cutting my you skin. I'm so no. you're blind. Really I'm blind. Yes. Ow! OK, I will make it sure that you're properly with your nail. Yeah. They're the last in, but finally all the Brits can head on to the factory floor. Oh, that stinks. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Are oh, you having a lot? I've never seen anything like it. This is absolutely insane. Because of the heat from the tuna ovens, temperatures often reach a high of 90 degrees. This factory works in line with EU export regulations. At full capacity, the workers can produce over 40 million tins of tuna a year, much of it destined for Britain's food stores. The factory sells a 200 gram tin of tuna for 48p. To keep profits as high as possible, Supervisors like Ratne and Mascarena have to ensure their teams meet high targets. Before starting work, the Brits are briefed by the factory's quality controller, Sharon Solana. Hi, everyone. I'm Sharon. First should be no talking in the line, please as the saliva would contaminate the fish, and we don't want that. You have to wear your mask at all times. Second, whenever you want to leave your area, you have to ask permission. Yeah, okay, what time do we finish? Yeah, what time do we finish? We finish when the fish is finished. We will not go home until we have finished all the fish that we have cooked. Sharon then runs the Brits through the jobs they'll be tackling. First, gutting. First, you have to put in the knife. Yeah till the belly cavity, then you have to take out oh. the intestine, cut it off, <laughs> and throw it away. Why are you throwing it? We have a receptacle for the guts. Next, the cooked fish is skinned. And now you have to take off the head. Oh, lovely. And then loining, removing the white meat from the bones. Does the red meat taste bad? It's actually the blood. The Brits will be working first on the lining line, the best paid job in the factory. Wages are the equivalent of less than 40p an hour. If you don't do well in lining area, production would have the choice to transfer you to other areas, such as the skinning and gutting. What? No way. <laughs> I bloody hope I don't get moved to gutting fish, because, oh, probably rather clean the toilets than gut the fish. 22-year-old North London girl Lauren Kay is a real foodie. I just love food. I think about it 80% of the time. Today I'm going to be making deliciously chocolatey, sumptuous cheesecake. I love Nigella Dawson. She represents real women. Like she's voluptuous, lovely lady, and all her food is so tasty. It's a bit erotic. I'd, I'd go as far as say it's erotic. Perfect. Back in the tuna factory, the Brits are taken straight on to the busy loining lines. 
They're going to be tested by the factory bosses in just a few hours' time. This is not as easy as it looks. No. It's quite delicate. You've got to be really careful. Regular workers must loin at least 10 fish an hour. If the Brits can't keep up, they'll be demoted to the bloodier tasks of gutting or skinning. Oh. Exhausting, isn't it? I am sweating bucket loads under this. I can feel the sweat dripping down my boots. It's OK? It's OK. It's OK. After just 10 minutes, the conditions proved too much for Lauren. Hey, I'm going to pass out. Keep your head up, keep your head up. You're all right, you're all right. That way, that way. You're all right. No, not really. Fuck me. You okay? What happened? I don't know, you just fell. Fuck, oh, that's so scary. Fainting is a normal thing here. We're actually expecting someone to faint, okay? Be primarily because it's really very hot inside, especially if they have not eaten breakfast. I think they're having to go ask to stop in. It's not, I, I think they just don't care. They've got bigger worries, like they've got to meet their production, haven't they? Lauren has been taken to the medic's room to recover. I feel really, really strange. Like, really, really scared and, like, really shaky. And also I feel, like, pathetic because these people do this every day, day in, day out, and I'm in there for 10 minutes and I just pass out. I've had enough of this, man. I can't take it anymore. It's too much. I didn't realise it's the humidity that gets to you. I mean, it's OK skinning the tuna, yeah? But it's all the heat. I mean, my, my whole backside is hot water. And you feel, you feel like you can't talk? I feel like I can't get talk. shouted no, at if you exactly. shout no, I can't, I, you know, I've, I've not been in any conditions like this in my life. It's so hot, it could happen to even the bigger ones, and the, no one could catch what it. What happens if that was me? Who's going to carry me out? I'll try. That's the worst thing that's happened to me so far. 25-year-old Olu Johnson lives in Tottenham, but emigrated from Nigeria as a small boy. Since arriving in England, I have not travelled. I haven't been out of the country yet. What's up, man? I think it's coming up to 16 years now. Let's get serious. The nine-year-old Olu found England to be very Come different. On, Moving from Nigeria to England was a big culture shock. As a child, I was used to detached housing. And in England, like, you have 400 people living on one road. It's just like, you know, what is this? Legal executive Olu now spends most of his spare time working out. Olu wants to look good. He wants to look tough, and he wants to prove tough, and he wants to show forth his biceps. Oh, I think I like the attention. Oh. In fact, I think I'd say I love the attention. Mm. But if I'm really honest, the attention loves me. How hot am I? This has my name written all over it. To keep his weight up, Olu consumes vast amounts of food. So the cheaper, the better. I don't know how they produce it, where they produce it. I don't care. Keep producing it, because I love it. It tastes good. And um, I'm going to have as much as possible. Having not left Britain for 16 years, Olu's father hopes this trip will broaden his horizons. 
he's lived most of his life in England. So he will be going to Southeast Asia as a British person with British mentality. And so it's going to be a, a lot of cultural difference. He's going to learn something deep that he has, he will never learn in England. Olu and the rest of the group are on their one daily break in the factory canteen. You know what? I thought to myself, what's the worst that can happen? Piece of this, we'll get in there, we'll do it. We'll either get it right or wrong. But I think it's harder than that. It's just hit home a little bit. And I moan all the time about my job. I'm really dreading to going back there at this moment in time. Um, pe people are just working like machines. I can't act like a machine, I'm just a human being. And, uh, you know, I, I've, in general, I've not worked in any of these conditions before, and I don't want to. After a full checkup by the medic, Lauren's been given the all clear to return. Right. That was so epic. <laughs> I was so scared. Like, literally, I just didn't know what was going on, and I was crying my eyes out because I was just so scared. When do we finish? Breaks over, and the Brits are ordered back to the production lines. Like all new workers, the Brits are now going to be tested by the factory bosses. Those that can't work to the Loining Line's high standards will be demoted to less well-paid and more gruesome jobs. Quality control supervisor Sharon spells out exactly what she expects. We're going to find out. There are two things that we're looking for here. First would be the speed. Second would be the quality of the loins that you're going to produce. It's free of skin, free from scale, free from red meat and no bones. Your standard should look like this. I crack under pressure. If I feel like I've got a perform, I do a worse job. Nobody wants to fail, and Lauren suspects Manos has already started working on his fish out of view. He's cheating. I saw you scraping your fish. I'm not cheating. There you are. I just saw you scraping your fish under the thing. I just saw you doing it. Sharon, we've got to get another fish for Manos, because if this is a test, everyone has to be on the same footing. Yeah, let's do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. With Manos's fish replaced, the test can finally begin. You have 10 minutes. You can start working. They must now hit the factory's training target, removing all the bones and dried blood from one fish in just 10 minutes. And in line with factory rules, they must work in total silence. and I just, I'd given up by then because it just didn't go well at all. As the quality control team judge their efforts, the Brits wait anxiously for their results. But outside, Olu is still furious with Manos. I'm not in a mood. Manos is ruining my day. It's really getting on my nerves starts before we've been told to start. And Lauren tried to say to him, what are you doing? You're cheating. And he laughed it off like, oh, whatever. But you can't, you can't be a liar and a cheater where I come from. That's not cool. I can't trust you if you lie and cheat, right? It, it, and it won't wash with me. The all-important loining test results are in. Your speed is much lower than our target. Stacy, you forgot to skin the whole area. Josh, one whole loin undone. For Manos, 
unacceptable level of wounds for all who should be skin and an unfinished loin. Stacy, I'm going to put you in the loining line. Thank you. Lauren, Jess, I'm also going to put you in the loining line. Olu, I decided to keep you in the loining line because I think you were really very careful with handling the fish and you followed the instructions very well. Josh, I'm sorry, but I have to transfer you to another area. Manas, I'm sorry, but you also have to be transferred to another area. Am I going to mix up by one of your sisters? <laughs> 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 Olu avoided demotion to the less desirable jobs, but he's still fuming about Manus's attempts to cheat. Man, I need to be able to trust you. Okay. Do you understand? I can't have you saying one thing and doing another. It doesn't wash. It was kind of bad for me to do that. So why did you cheat? I, feel, I, I, I thought it was a joke. I shouldn't have done it. Are you pressing my buttons on purpose? No, I'm not, mate. Is that what you're doing? No, I'm not. Listen to me. Mm. I'm a nice guy. You are a nice guy. Don't. Let me speak. And then, because the more you interrupt, the more I think you're taking the mic out of me. And then that just, it just heats me up. I right, suggest so don't say anything. I'm a nice guy. But I have a bad side. Everybody does. Do not bring out my bad side. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm really feeling that was a good point for you to speak and say, yes, I understand. No, I don't understand. You're just you're stepping closer to me. You're nodding your head like you're gonna do something. Man. What are you gonna do? Hey, I'm not doing anything. So why are you walking into me nodding your head like that? I was scared. That's it. In case I yeah. What's fear got to do with it? Just in case. No. In case I thought you were scared. Yeah. Scared of what, man? It's me. No, Manos, you are scared of me. I'm scared. Manos, you're scared of me. Manos, are you scared of me? Yeah. Sorry, mate. Manos. Yeah. Are you scared of me? Yeah, of course. Ole, 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 ole. What was that for? That happened light. I admit, I didn't say nothing when he changed the thing and he just got pissed off. I'm, I'm in shock, I don't understand if someone gets pissed off for being a joker, what's wrong with that? I've got friends that don't get pissed off for being a joker. Um, a bit of a commotion. What happened now? Well, do you know Olu was a bit miffed, a yeah, bit quiet? Yeah. Me and Manos and Olu were sat down, I just said, are you all right, mate? You, you seem tense and he just kind of... God, it's just a bit, it was quite oh, tense. Hey. Um, Olu, by this point, was really annoyed, and he, I think he just went to pick Manos up to to make him realise how big Olu is, and, he, and he's gone into the glass and smashed it. <gasps> oh, my God! Are you serious? After this shocking incident, the tuna factory bosses asked that the Brits leave the premises. The group go to a local hotel, Olu wants to talk with Manos. Hey, how's it going? You OK? Hey. Yeah, I'm not bad. Good, yes. man. I'm not going to deny that this got way out of hand. And, I, you know, I'd like to tell you to your face that I am incredibly, incredibly happy that you're OK, nothing was wrong. You know, that was my main concern. I had no right to put my hands on you. I'm sorry about that. Do you think that I, in any way, provoked you to do what you had to do? See, for me, what happened was an accident. You know, for me, provocation was a series of events. Mm. Can I trust him? Can I not trust him? Why does he keep doing that? As for an apology, it's questionable. As for a decent, uh, you know, gesture, who knows? Manos isn't sure if he wants to continue with Olu in the group, so he speaks to the others to help him decide. What should we do? I think we need to come to a group decision, really. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want him here. You, I'm not. I think he should go. No, don't want him here. What do you think? I just don't think he deserves a second chance, no. so no, I think he should go. 
I think it's settled, then um, I think he must go. The group all agree that Olu must go home. This decision isn't a magical decision, you know, it's the result of um, something that I did, so. I'm a firm believer in, you know, when one experience ends, you know, it allows you to embark upon another. And I think more than anything, seeing how hard people have it here and yet still how determined they are to, to carry on with life, it's going to make me go back and, and take more seriously the opportunities I had. After Ollie's violent outburst, the tuna factory bosses said that only the girls would be allowed back into work. Manos and Josh head off to the local port. They're going to experience the harsh reality of catching the skipjack tuna, which ends up in the factory. This is our boat. This is our boat. But before they can even catch a fish, they face a 12-hour journey to the deep water tuna grounds of the Sulawesi Sea, 100 miles offshore. Many of the crew live on board permanently, rarely seeing their families. Manos and Josh will live, work and eat with these fishermen. And they're expected to sleep alongside over 60 of them in a cramped deck directly above the engines. Just been shown to where we're sleeping and it looks crap. There's about that much space, head to toe. We're not going to be able to stand up, not even sit up. I was hoping to get a bit of kit tonight as well. Mortgage advisor Josh Hill is definitely used to his creature comforts. At just 20, he already owns his own home in Warrington, where he lives with his girlfriend Jade and baby Finley. I've never really roughed it. I'm a bit posh and proper to have roughed it. I really hope that when he comes over from age, he appreciates everything a lot more than he does now. After his family, Josh's greatest passion is food. Food is all I think about. Wake up in the morning, I'm thinking about what I'm having for breakfast, what I'm having for lunch. <coughs> After school, Josh started training as a chef. <laughs> but the long hours and low pay made him choose a very different career with a comfortable desk job at the local bank. Josh can go for these options quite often. He can get put off if something involves a lot of hard work. I'd say the reason I do sometimes take the easy way out is because I've always got family around me. This trip will be the first time Josh has been away from his family and all his home comforts. I'm going to miss you know, some of the luxuries that I'm used to, you know, hair straighteners, embarrassingly, nice wine, uh, the best foods available. That's what I'm most worried about. What age did you start working on the boat? It's 15. When you were 15? Yeah, 15. Yeah. And you've been doing this since then? 15, yeah. 15 years old. And do you have family back at home? I don't want to get it wrong. Mama. Huh? Mama. Only mother. Mother. He gives to his mother. All, all your money you give to your mother? Yeah. All your wages? Yes. Yes. Because his father is dying a few, few years ago. And how much money do you earn while you're on the boat each trip? Berapa doing aja dapat satu trip dan di kapal? Ya seratus jo. It's about one hundred thousand rupiah every week. So it's about seven pounds. Wow. That is hard graft. My hat off to you. Yeah. Well done. I've been told the average wage for a two-day fishing trip is about three pounds in English. So. You know, it's not, you won't get out of bed for it back home. You know, you can buy a pint of beer for that. It's worrying to think that this is all the people get out of It's cramped, there's no mattresses, it's hard wooden floor, there's no luxury, there's no clean toilet. I'm, I'm just not happy at the moment. The boat is so crowded that the only place for Josh and Manos to sleep is on the top deck, completely exposed to the elements.
Back at the boarding house, the girls are alone. The disruption caused by Olu means that Ratmi has had to stay behind at the factory to make up for lost time. I feel responsible because I feel like she's only been there that late because of all the drama we've caused, and it's just embarrassing. Just after 8 o'clock, four hours after she usually gets home, Ratmi finally returns. We're really sorry about all the commotion today. I admire you, Ratmi. I really do admire you for working so hard and being so happy and all the time. Pekerjaan semua kalau dikerjakan dengan hati yang senang pasti enjoy. Still pretty hard though. Ratmi has three children, but she can't afford to live with them. She saves all her wages in the hope that one day she'll be able to buy a house where they can all live together. I just admire Ratmi so much. Don't you get upset. <laughs> Oh, he's a leaf. I think I'm just I'm over tired. I feel sick all the time, and it was just really hard. And like me, just like not coping and passing out, really shaking me up. I know, but that's not not coping. That's not something you can choose to do. Huh? I'm so scared it's gonna happen again tomorrow. It was so scary. Over 100 miles from the Indonesian coast, the tuna boat finally arrives at the deep sea fishing grounds. The crew take their positions at the bow of the boat, while the captain is on the lookout for any tuna. But so far, the fish just aren't rising, which is probably a good thing for some of the newer members of the crew. I feel absolutely awful. I've been sick, throwing up. I haven't stopped really since this morning. I've just had diarrhea. I've just. Um, my eyes are just hurting, and um, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel great now. He offered me to go back to the factory today, stand up all day, and quite happily take it because I can't handle working on the sea. Back on dry land, Stacy, Jess, and Lauren are about to start their second day at the tuna factory. As the girls were not involved in yesterday's incident, the factory bosses have agreed to let them return to work. Today is a big day for the girls. They're moving off the training tables and onto the production lines for real. Mainly worried about the heat. It's the reason why I sort of passed out yesterday was just like the regular workers, the girls must now process the equivalent of nearly 600 tins of tuna each a day. After just half an hour, though, the girls are disastrously behind. And their production line is severely affected. Head production manager Joseph calls in their line supervisors Ratmi and Mascarena. Joseph then pulls the three British girls off the lines. Neither Jess or Lauren are anywhere near the factory targets. You know what, that completely makes me have, like, perspective on the job. Yeah, same as How man. hard they have to work, and then they just don't even get a chance to stop and breathe. Or go to the toilet or anything. Joseph demotes them both. In the middle, Lauren, you're in the dancing area. Gutting? Yeah. Are you joking? Dancing area. Great. 
and uh, for this, a skinning area. I can't work in the skinning area. I don't like fish, so I can't break their heads off. This was pushing it. Breaking a fish's head off? No. Oh my I worked my ass off for these fucking fish. Yeah, There's I worked no really hard off. as well. Being fucking promoted. Stacey's loining is by far the best quality. For now, Joseph is prepared to keep her on the line. Over lunch, the girls chat with the local workers. So would you be happy if your children grew up to come and work in a factory like you? You'd be happy, yes? Yes. yes. Good job. Good job. I just think it's unreal how they think their job is a good job and how they earn good money. We've got that luxury of not working if we don't want to. Like it benefits. We can get benefits if you if you're that way inclined. Like there is that back. Yeah. And like here, there isn't. You work and you eat. Pretty much everyone around here works here and it's it's the best option around here. And so for this to be the best option and for them still to be quite poor is a shock. Back on the boat, there's still no sign of any tuna. These fishermen still use a traditional pole and line technique to catch their haul. The crew try every trick they can to lure the tuna to the surface. They scatter live bait and spray the water with hoses to mimic a feeding frenzy. With nothing biting, it's all hands on deck. Josh and Manos are forced to find their sea legs and are put to work. How many fish in 10 minutes? 50 until 150. 50 fish in 10 minutes? Wow. I don't think I can do 50 of anything in 10 minutes. Josh mans a pole. Am I doing it right? While Manos acts as his bait boy. Give me some bait. Suddenly, the captain seems to have spotted a shoal of fish. fishermen in the world. <laughs> These guys are catching hundreds. We've not caught one yet. I think it's because Manos can't throw bait in very well. Oh, come on. With the fish biting, Manos is ordered to take a line too. Oh, this is bloody useless. Where the bloody hell are all these tuners? I'm bloody useless. I haven't caught anything. After 45 minutes, all Josh's hard work <laughs> finally pays it's off. Yeah, right, it's not done. See you, Advent. How many did you get, Manos? Um, I got 100, I think. How many did you really get? Um, zero. And I got two in two minutes. So uh, it was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, proper rush of blood when you catch a fish, so. And two in a minute, I mean, that's amazing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Have you caught fish before? No. It's the first time, it's first brilliant, time. isn't it? Yeah. In the first 20 minutes, the crew catch over seven tons of fish, the equivalent of more than 40,000 tins of tuna. I just saw these fish literally um, 10 minutes ago in the uh, sea, and all of a sudden they're uh, now in the boat. So, yeah, it's amazing stuff. These people are really happy. Good job, eh? Good job, boys. Some of these guys are whipping out 15 fish a minute, fish flying everywhere, all directions, sliding to the bottom of the boat. It's just incredible. I think we've caught something like 20 tons of fish. And two of them are mine. <laughs> it's not just a result for Josh and Manos. A catch of this scale is a triumph for the entire crew. Back in the factory, though, things aren't so great for Jess and Lauren. They've both been demoted. Jess has been moved to the skinning lines. You have to remove the skin, the tail part, slit it open, remove the head. 
No. Oh. <laughs> Did you have to stick your finger in his eye? 19-year-old dance teacher Jess Cooper lives at home with her family in Barnet. All my family describes me as Paris Hilton, especially my mum. She's little Miss Perfect, wants everything to go her way, and she spends hours in her room grooming herself. And it's kind of the daily joke in the house. Oh, Paris is coming home. I'll move out the way. Paris is coming through the room. And Paris wants this. And, Paris... and I think it's just because people think I'm so high maintenance. All Jess ever eats is processed food. This is my world. Burgers, chips, pizza. With me, it's pretty much like I'd eat meat if it was in the form of a burger or a sausage. If I don't really know what I'm eating and it's covered up in a sense, then it feels to me like it's all right to eat. Jess has never actually travelled beyond Europe before. I think Jess will find it very hard roughing it because she's just so used to home comforts, obviously still living at home with her mum and dad and everything, that she just gets whatever she wants. But despite her pampered ways, Jess is determined to show people a different side to her. I am a very girly girl, but I'm also very... If there's a challenge in front of me, you know, I'll do it, and I'll do it with 100% effort. That is disgusting. I'm not even trying. Why don't you start with dashing the fish? I can't. I know you're getting angry at me, but I really can't. <coughs> I, I just nearly heaved. I just can't... I can't take that. To me, personally, this is the worst job in the world. It's just lowest of low. As she's refused to do skinning, Jess has moved on to the most simple job in the factory. Lauren, meanwhile, has been demoted to one of the more gruesome jobs. You work in the gutting area. Every 20 seconds per one pitches. 20 seconds to gut. 20 seconds you got. OK. Oh, what is all that? She is now expected to gut over 200 fish an hour. With inside. Oh, I can't do it. It feels horrible. Yeah, no, All right, not it's so. not a fish. Yeah. Oh, my God. You're doing less than 20 seconds. Hell, yeah. I feel so proud of myself. I'm going from on the first day within the first, like, half an hour fainting because it was too hot to being able to gut a fish. What's your name? Lauren Kay. At the end of their shift, the girls can finally clock off and pick up their pay. After rent is deducted, it's just two pounds. That's the minimum wage for unskilled workers. That's 44,500 rupees. Is that just, just for today? Just for today, yeah. just for one day of work. Mm -hmm. Bloody hell. Factory workers process around 600 tins of tuna per person each day. The factory sells these for approximately £300 and pays each worker around £3. That's minimum wage, yeah? It's a minimum wage. It's enough. It's enough for our workers, though. Uh, with the uh, standard of living here and the prices of the commodities, I think they're, they're going to live with it. It's enough for them. Do you think they're happy with what they earn? It's enough for them. It's enough for them. So I think uh, <laughs> they can't do anything about it. it it's, it's their... They have no other choice. That's crazy. Yeah. Our minimum wage back home is so higher nice. for an hour than what theirs is for the whole day. In the Sulawesi Sea, the tuna boat has started the 12-hour journey back to port. Boats like these can be at sea for weeks on end, and many of the crew live on board all year round. This trip has forced Manos to rethink some of his attitudes. I, I, I said things um, very silly at the start, I think. When I said, you know, that economic exploitation was, um, you know, uh, was good for me, then so be it. But now I really want to take that back after seeing the effort they, you know, effort they produce and, you know, how, how hard they work. Basically, um, it makes me look like an idiot by saying, you know, things like that. And then here, here's me meeting these people, and I don't want these people to be exploited. I want these people to have a, you know, genuine life like I can, because they treated me equally, and they should be treated equally as well. 
Forgive me for what I'm gonna say, but I, I, I used to think that you know by the West exploiting you guys, it was good. I didn't care about you guys' effort. I just cared about the money, and I feel really ashamed for thinking like that. Today's made a lot of difference in my life. I hope you can forgive me and find it in your heart to accept a person who's willing to change. Oh yes. Yeah, I care about this. After 36 hours at sea, an exhausted Josh and Manos finally arrive back at port. Very good. Thank you for Thank teaching you. us well. Good good they may be back on dry land, but the young fishermen and crew head straight back out for another week at sea. Have a good one. Good luck. I just want to go to bed. That was hard, hard work. How do they do it? No, no, I can't believe they've gone back they're out. They've gone back again. All for the same seven pounds. It's ridiculous. Amazing, isn't it? I can never ever do that, I'll tell you that. Let's go, mate. It's their last night in Bitung, but before they go, Stacey, Lauren and Jess want to spend their wages. Or a big box of any, any biscuits. Yeah. Only got like chocolate ones. How much yeah. have we got between all of us? Yeah. I'm happy to spend this all today. Yeah, me too. Four thousand five hundred. You don't have much money to play with, do you? No, you really don't. That's almost a day's wages. Yeah, just that's... some bread and jam. That's Let's amazing. keep going. What else can we get? Chocolate. Remy hasn't got any anything like this in her mm, house. She's got like sacks of rice. Anyway, should we get some cake? Yeah. yeah. How much? Can you tell us how much all together? The girls' wages are only enough for a few snacks and chocolate. Thank you. Bye. Bye. We put all our money together. <laughs> we had a little bit of change. Do you want? We'd like you to have that. Thanks. Don't be silly. Don't cry. I am really. The loose change they've given Ratmi is the equivalent of a little over one pound. Don't come. Come on, boy, and uang. Bagi saya sangat berharga karena saya kerja sampai malam hanya cari duit. Coba saya suka dan marka dan saya makan. Kecuali saya dapat duit banyak. This in England is so minor, it's nothing at all. And like, this here is like a massive treat. It really puts it onto perspective, doesn't it? I would much rather, like, pay more for my can of tuna at home if it meant that they'd get a bit more. Seeing what Ratmi has to live on now does sort of break my heart a bit. I feel awful, like... <laughs> How little we've taken, how like little we just didn't appreciate at all what we got given. Ratmi cannot afford to rent a big enough house for her family near the factory, and her husband works in a gold mine on another island. So her children live full time with her mother in law. Even travelling across town to see her children is a luxury she can rarely afford. <laughs> In the UK, that's less than a pound. How much did we give her today? Enough to... I don't even know if it was enough. No, we gave her about 9,000 no, rupees. Okay. So that is quite a nice feeling, though, thinking uh, we gave her more to to go to go to to do, you, do you see do them very you? often? <laughs> the money which the girls gave Ratmi allows her to make a surprise visit to her kids. Is this your baby? Yeah. Aww. What's her name? Dina. 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 Hello, 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 Dina.
kita tinggal ini. Kita jangan dong shopping. Oh, Yay. Oh, beautiful. In the future, do you hope you'll be able to have enough money one day to afford everyone? Angan-angan untuk memang punya sebuah rumah untuk berkumpul dengan keluarga. Tonight is the last time they will see Ratmi and her family. Thank you for having us. Tomorrow, they all embark on the next leg of their journey. Before they go, the group are reunited at a local hotel. You really caught the sun. When we started this journey, I was really scared that I was going to go home thinking, crap, I'm not going to eat these foods again. Mm. But after seeing how much work they put into it and how much effort they put into catching it. I would be more than happy to like pay more for my can of tuna, do you know what I mean? Knowing that money is going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So knowing it would go there. Next time, things are about to get even tougher as the group move on to the prawn industry to take on one of the dirtiest jobs in the food business. I feel dirty all the time. I feel filthy. Can they handle the most challenging workload yet? I've done my goddamn hardest. There's nothing else I can do. You know? I wouldn't be facing such shit back in London. Or will the reality of life in the prawn industry prove too much to take? So hard out here. I'm just amazed to see how hard he works. Oh,